All right, Bucks fans, going to take a look at uh, some of Leonard Fournette's best runs and Ronald Jones' best runs, the Bucks' run scheme in general from their 38-31 uh, to 31 victory over the Colts. This is something new that we're trying out at Pew Report, just trying to get some of these videos up and give you all some more access to some film breakdowns at certain points. So bear with us as we figure out the details and the finer points of doing things like this. And I'm sure how it starts, how it looks at the beginning, it's not going to be how it looks uh, in its final product in a few weeks or months or a year or whatever uh, it takes for us to get it right. We'll keep working it out and ironing out the kinks and making sure uh, this stuff looks as good as it can possibly look. So uh, going to start here. We've got to show seven runs in this. I don't think they're all four net. I think there's a couple Rojo in here too. But this is counter tray. So they're going to run counter tray to the boundary, which is over here. Now, boundary is the short side of the field, by the way. That ball's on this hash. Uh, so the left side of the field here would be to the field. The right side would be to the boundary. So they're going to run counter trade to the boundary. And you can see as the play starts that Nick Leverett's the pulling guard. So counter, very simple. Uh, they're going to basically wash everything down. So you're down block and pinning these defensive tackles right where they are. Smith's going to hinge back here and make sure this guy's blocked. Receivers are releasing and trying to pick off the backside runners over here. And then you've got Leverett pulling play side basically and then Cam Brait. Uh, pulling with him. So O-line tight end blocking together. Uh, it's counter tray uh, when they called that way. And you can see Tyler Johnson has a key block here. He's actually going to ear hole this linebacker and try to cut him off, this play side linebacker. And then Leverett would be responsible here for the backside linebacker. And Brait is going to come kick out this guy. Now, I think, I'm not totally sure, if Leonard stays and hangs out here and this guy comes up field, this edge rusher, then Leverett would kick out the edge rusher Worfs would climb to Leonard and, or sorry, well, Worfs would climb to the backside backer and Johnson would still get this block on Leonard here. And Brait would have be responsible for this corner here. But this defensive end steps down and Worfs is smart. He kind of sees this and he literally just throws the guy <laughs> right into the end of the line of skirts. So I'll run it back here. Watch Worfs just tosses the guy all the way down the line of scrimmage into the defensive tackle. So just a monster torque block uh, there by Tristan Wirfs. And you can see Leverett kind of gets confused here. Leonard flies up as he should, and he sees Tyler Johnson, but Johnson gets this pin on him. And Leverett gets kind of confused here about who he's supposed to take. He thought for a second it was going to be Leonard, so he takes that angle, and instead it's it's this guy, so he kind of loses his eye, his sight a little bit. And this linebacker is able to work over the top, stop Fournette's feet, um, and eventually make the play. So Leverett couldn't quite track with him, but everybody else basically does exactly what they're supposed to do. Leonard, good job. He recognizes Johnson's got him pinned inside. Going to go outside of your block here and inside of, of Braid's block here. Braid actually does a great job here. If Leverett can hit this block, it's probably, you know, curtains. He's getting, he's down here and he's got DBs one-on-one -on -one in the open field. This guy's going to be in pursuit. The safety is going to have to make a great play on a big back in space. So it's pretty much perfectly drawn up and perfectly called. They just need Leverett to make a better block there. Tough stuff. It's your first NFL game, but that's counter Trey. Again, you're walking, operating with polars here. Um, so yeah, you're just, it's, it's, it's a little bit different and I'll kind of run through it here for you. It's a little bit different than you're seeing, than you typically seeing right now with this run scheme is they're getting guys out on the perimeter and making plays like that. So it's pretty exciting stuff. Even if it doesn't work every single play, the concepts are there. They're being called at the right time against the right fronts. They just have a great feel for what they're doing in the run game right now. Okay, here's a play. with This is with Ronald Jones. This is actually uh, a zone run here. This is this is actually crack toss. Uh, they're kind of blocking it like outside zone up front, um, except they're kind of pulling these guys out and around, which is typical in crack toss. So Brait and Wirfs here are going to pull out and around these crack blocks here, but they're going to pin both these guys. You got him on a, on a big defensive end here. Um, uh, you got Tyler Johnson, who was, a, who was terrific as a blocker in this game. Tyler Johnson's going to pin here. Godwin's going to pin here. You're going to have Worfs and Brake getting out and around in space. Athletic linebackers, so you, so these kind of runs test these guys. They're, they're built for it, but they also test them. Can you throttle down and make plays in space? So you can see here, good job by Rojo. Getting way outside the blocks and getting there with speed too, right? No hesitation, that nothing, no interior penetration here. Uh, great job by Alex Kappa getting his head across this block on that zone step. That's terrific stuff. You can see Tyler Johnson's hips nice and low, exactly where you want him to be. He's leveraged. Jensen, look at him getting to the second level, clean. Uh, it's great stuff by Jensen being able to get down there, get a great angle. And this, this is all you want in space. Just hold this guy up. That's perfect. 
Uh, then you got to worry about this play side guy and this play side corner, I think. Um, and so you can see Werfs gets a, just a tremendous block. Not easy to make that block in space on a faster player. And just a great block on Okarike. Uh, knocks him back several yards. There's just no challenge for Fournette here at all. He doesn't have a cutback lane because this guy does a great job in pursuit for the Colts. This is why pursuit's important. This is a defensive tackle. He get all the way out here. Otherwise, Jones could probably cut this back. You know, he's not even going to get credit for a tackle on this play, but he basically prevents him from becoming a huge play because he's able to get in pursuit here. But they pretty much wash these guys straight out to the sideline. And if Jones could have cut back in here one-on-one -on -one with the safety, which is exactly what you want, uh, Brait makes another really good block in space and makes sure that corner can't come out and make a play. And I think that's well, about eight yards. So it's just a great play. It's a great concept but they have these linemen to get out in space and pull and make blocks like this and they just didn't use it last year brandon thorne and i some of you know him from twitter we talked about it a lot um and this is something that they just need to do a, a lot better job of moving forward and they've just been great at it this season so here i'll let it run one time at full speed see the blocks out on the perimeter rojo gets eight yards that's a big win uh on that play okay we got another play here let's see this one's i believe this is a dart scheme run so dart scheme is when you're pulling the backside tackle on these on these on this concept so Werfs is right here the right tackle he's going to pull and basically what you're going to get the usually dart scheme is run to the nose tackle so you can see him here the one technique uh, is right here and so they're going to run it at him the reason that is is because these two players can get the double team here and that's what you want. You want to be able to hold this so there's no penetration. Crucial that there's no penetration here. And on the backside, no penetration as well. You don't want anything to develop in here as this guy pulls across because it's a little bit longer developing. So dart scheme, you can see Werfs. They've got the double team here. Kappa's got to get his head across Buckner here. Very difficult block. Um, he's got to hang on here and, and at least wash him down. And you don't want to wash him down because you don't want to wash him play side, but you can't let him get into the backfield. That's the biggest thing. Um, Gronk's looking for cut, cut off. Uh, Godwin's looking for cut off, stop pursuit. And then Donovan Smith actually has some nice work to do out here as well. He's got to turn out this DN. So whatever happens, this DN cannot cross Smith's face and get inside of him. That's the critical part. So you can see Smith gets low leverage, maybe drops his eyes and gets a little overextended here, but that's a rookie he's working against, I think. So you don't have to worry as much about technique, just steering him out of the gap. So you can see him get great lockout block, and that guy's upfield. He's keeping edge contain anyway. So this is you know, he's going exactly where he should be going, but Smith's making sure he doesn't break the rules and come back inside here too. So double team's pretty good here. Great block, Leverett. They actually get him out of the gap. And now Jensen kind of sees, okay, Leverett's got control here. Maybe I can overlap him and get this backside backer because that's his responsibility. This double team right here is working nose tackle to backside backer or middle linebacker in this situation, which is Darius Leonard. So they have kind of they have the double here, and then they're both, they're getting their eyes to whoever can get clean is getting their eyes and trying to get him before he can make a play. And Werfs has the on the pole has this linebacker right here. So you can see Werfs as he comes around, great job being leveraged. Linebacker comes on, takes him on as he should. Werfs gets him right up out of the hole. Great vision by Fournette. Great timing. He slows those feet. He's able to get uphill, and you can see Leonard, to avoid the double team, it didn't block him but he knows the double team's coming so leonard actually has to overplay this because if he stays here he thinks they're going to get him but he has to overplay it and that's where it gets tough right because they took care of every other variable even though they don't block him they kind of do with the concept just the idea of what they're going to do kind of makes him overplay it and now fournette's able to get downhill and it's not a huge run but i think it's a seven yard run and that's great that's when you when you run on first down as much as the bucks you can win those plays like that. You can see Buckner gets some penetration, but Cap is able to stay on him. Great block there. That's not easy to do one on one against the premier player. And you can just see Fournette, boom, I'm getting straight downhill. And uh, exactly how it's drawn up, and they run it perfectly. Good block by Werfs. Uh, the concept itself uh, made Le put Leonard in a really hard spot because everybody else was blocked. And so uh, that's kind of what you want. Can you remove variables and just only worry about one, one or two players? And if they make the play, it's still probably a seven yard gain. Um, it's, that's something that this con those concepts do really, really well. Okay. We got another player. This one's Fournette again. Um, and let's see what I'm trying to recall this one. Oh, this is the same one. What am I saying? Hang on. Let's roll past that one. Okay. Here we go. We got, uh, on the goal line here, this is going to be a pull. I think Donovan Smith is going to pull here and actually kick out on this back side or on this front side over here. So this player is going to come up unblocked and he's also flying off the edge unblocked. So this is actually great. You know, a lot of people look at this and say, oh, Fournette, you know, doesn't get touched on this play really like this easy touchdown. But he actually does a great job because right here, 
This is looking like a sandwich in the backfield. Smith's the only blocker. If he hesitates, this guy will catch him. You know, if he goes too far one way or the other, this guy will catch him. If he panics and just runs straight into the line and gets too close to the line, Leonard's going to come down and get him in the backfield. So how he plays this and that he has a plan for his footwork is so critical. Watch him. He goes straight north, right? Exactly where, right between both guys. He delays so Smith can get this block. Boom. And then as soon as Smith blocks, he's cutting away before Leonard can get him. He's cutting away and he's getting out the front side and then it becomes an easy Gives this guy a shot at the end, even though he kind of tiptoed into the end zone. I wasn't crazy about that, but um, this is just terrific footwork by Leonard. Watch him squeeze right up in there, and he knows exactly when his block hits. He's got cut right off of it. Not a second too late. Perfect timing. And Leonard, you can see him. He's, he's frustrated. Come on. He throws his mouthpiece down, I think, in the background. It's a great block. Great block by Donovan Smith in space. Also want you to see Tristan Warps on the edge here. Watch watch him throw this guy down. Watch him just no, try to get interior penetration. Nope hoist him up, and just look at how far he takes him. I mean, that just makes this whole thing so much easier. There's nothing else over here on the front side. As soon as Leonard gets out, there's no penetration. There's no there's no color from the other team at all. No blue jerseys at all. He's got a clear sailing path to the end zone. Just avoid that safety and get in there. That's all he had to do. So, again, Worfs and Smith just dominating in the run game. Um, okay, let's look at one more here. I think we got one or two more. Okay, this is wham block. I almost fell out of my chair when I saw this happen. I've never seen the Bucks run a wham play. I've never seen Arians run a wham play. Maybe I missed it before. This is actually wham bam, it's called, because Gronkowski here, what you're doing is you're leaving the D tackles unblocked in this situation. So Gronkowski's going to come here and block this uh, three technique. And then um, Leverett's going to do a little, just a little skip pull here and, and get a piece of 96, I believe. Um, and so that's all they're doing, but they're trying to run right in here. They're basically influencing this defensive tackle. I'm unblocked, and I see the puller. 90 is going to step down here. He wants to step down toward the center because he sees this puller. He's going to chase that puller and be aware of a down block here in case they're running counter, which they've run a bunch. He knows the down block could be coming here to pin him down, so he's going to attack this block, the center. But whoops, we're not actually blocking you with the center. We're letting you go straight up field. Gronkowski's coming across. Bang. Now he's pinned you down. Levert misses his block here on 96. Um, again, 96 is a good job recognizing and shedding great job by him, but you can see like, that's the concept. That's what they want, right? Gronkowski coming across. Boom. Now we've pinned him. Now look at this lane for Rojo. And again, Tyler Johnson. I mean, this safety comes flying up here. Sandeo recognizes this very fast. Look at him. I think he's actually on a run blitz. I would guess, even though sending the guys from depth against Brady is very suspect, but look at Tyler Johnson root this guy out of the gap and adjust to the speed. Recognize it all the way, gets him right up out of there. Just a terrific block. Again, Johnson has struggled as a receiver, but, man, he was awesome as a blocker in this one. You can see Donovan Smith attacks the edge defender. Again, same idea for Smith that it was before. Turn him out. Make sure he can't get in this gap. That's what you want to do. So look at him lock out with that arm. Good stuff. He doesn't let him back inside. Now, this is the block that Leverett missed over here. Defensive tackle is coming across. The one technique is coming across. And he does able to get an arm on Rojo and slow him down, but... Give Rojo a ton of credit, man. He ran amazing in this game. And look at the speed with which he hits the hole. He is just like, I'm out of here. Like, in that momentum, just science, right? An object moving that fast is able to get through tackles and make a lot of yards after contact there. So great tackle here by Xavier Rhodes, a run defending corner. He made a couple good plays in run defense in this game. That could have been a bigger gain. But you could see Rojo, the momentum keeps him going. And then Worf says, I'm going to pull you for a couple more yards uh, at the end. But... It's just terrific blocking and execution up front. Again, Leverett kind of the weak point on this play a little bit, but it's still so good. I mean, John Jensen is able to get second level and just get Darius Leonard all the way out of there. That's just a great block. I mean, he dominates this block. Worfs can't quite get down on Okarike in space, but that's backside. That's just a really, really hard play because he's helping out here at first too. When this guy flashes inside, he's helping out there. So there's no way he's going to be able to get down there. He's, you know, hopefully he's here for any cutback if Rojo and he's, is going to cut it back across him. He can pick somebody off, but he ends up contributing anyway, so good hustle by him. Uh, but again, it's just conceptually, it's really good stuff because you're expecting the counters, right? You see the pullers, and watch Leonard. He's going to follow the puller, and that's he makes an easy block for Jensen. No Karike gets outside, and they're looking for the pullers. They're looking for a concept to this side because the Bucks have run that, have run those counter plays a lot. They've pulled these guys and tried to attack this side of the line of scrimmage. Now it's not there. Now they're going to keep this thing right in here. So look at them take off. Boom, they're getting their eyes here. Where's that puller going? Where's Leverett going? 
So we're blocking guys without actually having to block them at first, at least. You know, they never block Okarike really on this play, but it's a big game because they, he can't get there because they blocked him with a concept already. And that's where a run game evolves, in my opinion. That's why when I've been critical of duo, I've, I like duo. I just think that the concepts themselves, like if you just run them over and over again, you have to block everybody basically in duo. Like it's a vertical scheme. You got to displace people. You got to take people off the ball. It's just a, it's just a lot of room for mistakes when when you run something like that. And so when now that now you're using concepts and ideas to block people, and you're building on concepts with what you're calling, Leverett, boom, doesn't make the block here, but great block by Gronkowski, great block by Tyler Johnson, great block by Donovan Smith. I mean, look at this hole. That's conceptually already. It's exactly what you want. You've done the right thing. Even if this D tackle makes this play over here, Lever just needs to do his job better. That's all that. That's the only fix that is. Conceptually, you've gotten exactly what you've won. The play call worked. It's great scheme. It's called at the right time against the right front. It's just beautiful stuff from from a, from a scheme standpoint. Um, you can see Rojo making the yards after contact contact too, which is very exciting stuff. Okay, now we got the game winning touchdown here. I think we got this is the last one. I think. Rojo, uh, or sorry, Leonard Fournette, uh, this is pretty simple. Again, uh, they're just running this counter play, uh, and they're running at a jumbo um, at the end of the game. So the Colts know they're running, and they still can't stop a great pin here by Donovan Smith. He gets this, got no penetration here. Leverett uh, and Donovan Smith, do, or sorry, uh, Jensen. Leverett and Donovan Smith here do a great job on this uh, defensive tackle. Josh Wells does his job, and what Smith is able to do is great because he helps Leverett here. Now Leverett's able to get position because he got a little help from Smith. And then Smith is able to get to the second level on Okarike here and make what's the key block, and then even gets another guy here. Um, so great stuff. Gronkowski just ready, eyes on his player. He knows where he's supposed to be. And that guy steps inside too much. Again, Bucks are an interior run team. That's what they're used to seeing. They're used to trying to fill there. Not a good fill there, and Gronk's uh, pushing him down the line of scrimmage. Exactly how he should be. Good job by Wells hanging in here. Hanging in. Isn't great. He's getting pushed back, but he hangs in. Uh, and then Cap is out on space with the DB. Now, this is n not as easy a block to make as people think. Uh, you've got to throttle down and make sure that you're reading it the same way the back's reading it. But with nothing coming across here in Kappa's line of vision, anyway, he's right here. And he's seeing, okay, this is where he has to make his decision. There's nothing inside here. This guy's already outside. I'm just going to take him exactly where he's going. He doesn't want any part of me. He's going to run away. And then, actually, you know, Fournette does a good job breaking this tackle. But look where Sandeo comes from. <laughs> We're not talking about the best safety in the league here. This guy tracks him down, and this is where I wish Fournette maybe had a little more burst than he does. It takes him about 20 yards to get to top speed typically, but still enough here to get the job done. Um, this is a huge gap, obviously, uh, and he's able to break that ankle tackle. And then good job finishing behind the pads here because Grodin's making a great block. Um, he didn't overthink this. He just said, I'm going to wrap this ball up, and if somebody tries to stop me, my momentum's going to get me into the end zone, and it does from, from about four yards out. So... It's a terrific scheme, man. Uh, this is, again, this is the kind of stuff when you're used to seeing double teams up front from you're the opponent and you scout the Bucks, and then they start saying, hey, we're going to be totally multiple in our run scheme. We're going to go off of that. You know, these counter plays, dart, all these, some of these things that you see have just been really, really successful for them because conceptually they've got teams where they're wanting them and they're calling the right stuff against the right fronts at the right time. So thanks so much for jumping in here and learning a little bit about the Bucks run scheme and how they dominated the Colts with me.